Our speaker tonight is um, a native of Argentina. His name is Andres Cactavila, and he is here tonight with his lovely wife, Julia, and with his uh, daughter, uh, Valeria. And your friend is Scott, is that correct? As I said, Andres was born in Argentina, and uh, he came to the United States of America in 1999 on a work visa. He uh, went through the green card phase, and in the year 2013, he became a bona fide citizen of the United States of America. He has noticed that Argentina was once a major economic powerhouse, and, but he saw, beginning with Perón's leadership down there, the deterioration of that great, great society. When he got to America, he started noticing some of the signs in our country tracking the same paths that he saw develop in his home country of Argentina. And he told me it begins with the young people. And so he is here tonight to share his uh, experiences and what all he has been through. And he told me that tonight would be at least one of the, if not the first time, Andres has addressed a crowd from a public podium and a microphone. And I told him he could not be in front of a warmer, uh, welcoming crowd than Tallahassee Capital Conservatives. So he is going to make some remarks, and then with his permission, he is going to um, answer some questions. So would you please um, join me in welcoming Andreas Captivita. Uh, I wanted to run some parallels between, between Argentina and the United States. Uh, you know, nowadays they look like very, you know, very different countries, but at some point, beginning of uh, last century, they were kind of similar. Uh, they were kind of uh, new, new countries, both, uh, even weather-like. You know, they, they, they have cold weather all the way up to warm weather. It's very similar. In the weather in the landmarks as well are very similar uh, as in the United States. Um, even the constitution, the original Argentinian constitution, when you see, it was pretty much, uh, probably people don't want to say, but it was kind of a copy of the Constitution of the United States. It, it was uh, issued later than the, the United States, but based on the same principles. So very similar in that, in that sense as well. There, was a, there were a lot of people from all over the world coming to Argentina, uh, you know, at the same time they were coming uh, to the United States. A lot of people from Europe, you know, because of economical situations there or because different wars, looking for a better place. So we got a lot of uh, immigration from, from Italy, from even Germany, England, and other countries. Mainly Italy and, and Spain. Those are the, the two main uh, there. And they were very hardworking people. They, were, they, they went there to, to work hard in order to make a living. That, that was the, the focus. And some people, they tried to come to the United States, but it was a little bit difficult sometimes for them. And then they say, well, second option, Argentina. For them was come to America, you know, there was not, almost no difference. It was still America. Um, so at that time, um, you know, the GDP per capita uh, in Argentina was it's not as good as the United States. It was a little lower, but still very good for, you know, the standards at, the, at that time. You know, economically it was doing, doing very, very well. I'm talking about uh, 1920s, 1930s, 1940s. Um, but then, uh, Something happened. Um, uh, you know, the, the 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 current government at the time uh, there was a military coup. So then Perón started to gain power through that. Perón was originally from the army. He was a military. So he was vice president during that time. But he had different idea compared to typical military at that time in Argentina. They were mostly conservative. He was. A socialist. Of course, he, he never said that he was a socialist. Um, he learned that because he was uh, based in Italy uh, for some time. So he learned socialism because he was based in Europe and, and he learned it from there and he, and he liked it. So that's where, um, you know, he had these ideas and he started to put it to, to work in uh, there when he had power. He was first vice president 
Then he was elected uh, president, like was in 1945, something, about that time. Um, and he came with these ideas that now sound familiar here in the United States. Uh, one of the things was uh, social justice. So we, you know, we heard that many, many years ago. Now we are here in, here in, this, here in the United States. Equality, for example, was another thing he was talking about. He talked about, you know, that, uh, you know, the rich people compared to the workers. So basically created very, very strong unions. Uh, he started to give away, I don't know if that sounds familiar now, give away, for example, houses, uh, you know, to the people that was not able to afford the house. So the government came and said, no worries, you know, we can give you a house. <laughs> And, and not only houses and, and other things, you know, uh, you know, in Argentina it's very common to, you know, at the city level, for example, not at the federal level, the city level, they even give away shoes. You know, it's the, the level of, you know, the, the voter, voters are considered like clients. So the way, you know, they buy this client is with giveaways. And the shoe example is very nice, it's very good, because sometimes they give it, out of the two shoes, only one. If they win, then they give it the other. They can complete the pair. <laughs> I know we are not at that level here, but <laughs> watch out. <laughs> so, you know, in Argentina everything is public. They, they said, for example, uh, healthcare. We have public health care. And I know a lot of people nowadays, I hear, that's wonderful, you know? There is public health care almost anywhere, you know? You can go to Germany or to Spain, Italy, United, or Canada, you have public health care. Well, you know, in some of the countries they may work better than others. I hear that they complain in almost every case, right? But in Argentina it's even worse. Unless you have no option, you know, you cannot go there because, for example, if you go after 6 a.m., they don't have any more numbers for you to, you know, to be seen by the doctor. You have to wait till next day. Sometimes people need to wait overnight there, you know, in a line because after, depending on the hospital, 6, 7 a.m., sorry, you know, too late. No, and they have, so they don't get any service. Or, for example, even if you, unless it's that is, some blood running, you know? When they see some blood, then you can cut in line and get first. But then you have another problem. Sometimes they don't have the basic supplies. So family members have to scramble going go in different places in order to find supplies. I mean, the doctors, they have the will, you know, the best will to, to do a good job, but, you know, the, the infrastructure is not there. So, so this is a problem. So for people that don't want to go through that, they have to, look for other options, and that says it's private healthcare. So they pay through the taxes to maintain the public system, but they cannot use it. So they have to pay twice. And, and that's, that's very common, that's very common, not only healthcare, with the public education is something similar. The public education is an interesting system, you know, or situation there, because uh, you have, pub, you know, the. Education is free, it's never free, but uh, they, they say it's free from pretty much kindergarten all the way to university. So that sounds wonderful, you know, you can get, you can be an engineer without paying anything. Yeah, that's great, or a doctor, whatever. But it's, you know, but it's not, it's not like that really, because people that are poor, they cannot afford the time to study. So they have to work, you know, after high school, sometimes even before, they have to start, you know, working. So who are the people who can go to the university? Well, typically, you know, kind of middle class and the rich people. But everybody's paying for that education. You know, the poor people through every, and I'm going there, are paying for that education because through the taxes. So basically poor people is paying education for the richer people. So it's, you know, when say the free university is something fair, it's completely unfair. In order to maintain this system where everything is public, of course, you have high taxes. And 
And because they have so, the taxes are so, are so high, that is a lot of evasion. You know, people, a lot of people say, I'm not gonna pay these taxes. So they are always changing systems in order to try to collect more. And they collect sometimes more, but fewer people pay. So the economy is terrible there. Um, for example, they created this VAT, you know, the value added tax, because it's easy to collect compared to other type of taxes. And again, this is to pay for all these goodies, you know, supposedly for the poor people. But again, who are the ones paying the most in this tax system? The poor people, because when you pay VAT, you pay every time you buy something. Poor people, 100% of the salary or 120% of the salary, whatever they have, they have to buy basic stuff. So they are paying, you know, all the salary, every penny they can get, they are paying a tax for that. For the rich people, well, yeah, part of the, the salary or the, the income, they buy stuff, but the other part they invest, they take it to other countries, they can do things that the poor people cannot do. So in percentage-wise, the poor people are paying more in taxes than the rich people. So every time they say, well, who's gonna pay for all this, the rich? Yeah, maybe not. Typically are the poor paying for that. And that's very clear there, very, very clear. And again, because all these taxes and people not paying taxes, 50, it's more or less about 50% of the economy now is what they call black economy or, you know, under the table. They are not, there is no any record of that. And some people say, well, we, why you don't pay something at least and then you do pay the other? Well, once I'm in the system, they know who I am and they chase, they chase me. So people decide, I'm not gonna pay anything. <laughs> Nobody, you know, there is absolutely no record. So they live the entire life not paying anything, like, you know, living in a different country. So you have these inequalities, so it's not that equal. Um, so there are so many examples about that. And, and again, because of all these situations, Argentina is going from crisis to crisis. Yesterday, there was a new devaluation of the currency, 20, 25% in one day. So in one day, you have 25% less than the day before. I've seen cases where the devaluation was 50% in one day. So all you have, 50% less next day. Uh, in some cases, because of inflation, the currency, they had to remove like, the most I remember, four zeros from the currency. So you have 10,000 pesos, next day was one peso. <laughs> and you had to deal with this bill that says a number, but uh, it meant something different till they printed enough. And they print very fast, they are very good at that. <laughs> because they had to pay for all these goodies, so they have to, they printed money all the time. They print much more money than what they can, you know, um, uh, basically compensate in taxes. So this is a, yeah, a good exercise. They are very good at that, at printing money. Um, so after, well, in, in another problem there in Argentina regarding socialism was this idea that I've also seen here that the criminals or the you know, people committing crime, they were victims. They were not, they were victims of the system, victims of the society. So because of that, at some point they decided, hey, we cannot jail victims. So they open up the jails, pretty much. And that clear situation now where the crime is extremely, extremely high. Um, I remember when I was a kid, I, I used to watch movies about New York City. And I don't know if you remember Charles Bronson, this type of movies where you see all this violence in New York City, and I thought, how Americans can, can live, you know? From far away, you see New York City, and you think United States, you don't know the difference from there, right? So my, my thinking was, how can Americans live like that, with that violence? Well, after all these changes there in Argentina, that was very, very safe when I was a kid, it started to be even worse than New York City, you know, where 
every place you were at risk. There, were, there was pretty much no safe place to be. Um, so that all was also part of this idea of socialism. So it's not only the economical problem, but it's the quality you know, of living that goes down ter terribly. Um, and, and that's when I decided to come to, to the United States because of crime. I always had that idea, but once you have this, this problem, you're you know, always thinking about that, you know, how to stay safe. And, and that's, it's like an obsession, right? You all, it's the only thing you think of at some point, you know, your family and everything. So you cannot live like that forever. Um, so that, that was the reason I, I came to the United States and, and I'm very happy for the decision. Um, when I came here in the United States, I didn't have any <coughs> preference between Democrats and, and Republicans or, you know, to me it was more or less the same. Again, from Argentina, United States is a very conservative country compared to other countries. And you think that these different two parties will be, you know, slightly different in some details, but more or less, you know, with the same goal. In fact, when I got here, I didn't speak much English, so I used to listen, you know, I always like to listen talk radio, so I used to listen to NPR, because that was talk radio, it was pretty much everywhere. So to me, for me, I mean, for me to learn English was an, an excellent choice. But then at some point, you know, maybe I started to understand and said, hmm, this is not right. <laughs> I mean, there are some things here that remember, you know, the problems we, I had before. So that's when I started to explore other radio stations. <laughs> and, um, and honestly, I never thought that I would ever hear what I'm hearing now, you know, uh, for example, the Democratic candidates, for, for example, that, you know, they are completely, completely out of the American way of life. You know, they are proposing things that are amazing, proposing things that are, again, what I used, you know, it was common in Argentina. But I never thought, because coming here was not easy. The process is extremely long. You spend a lot of money. You have to hire lawyers. And I mean, it, it is really, really a big investment and a big effort. So when I made that decision, of course, you don't want to make it wrong, right? And, and, and again, I'm not, I, I don't think they made the wrong decision. But now I'm, I'm hearing these, these people uh, with these ideas about, you know, giveaways and more and more regulations. And, and, and I'm, I'm afraid, to be honest, that we may end up, you know, in the same situation. You know, we, you know, for a lot of people think the United States is very strong and probably is very strong, but uh, you can still break it. And I don't think, you know, people understand that, especially the younger generations where they, they sometimes, you know, I hear them and it seems to me like they have discovered something new, a better way of doing things. They think socialism is something that they just discovered. Hey, it looks, because it looks nice, you know. <laughs> Pretty much it doesn't matter what happens, you know, I'll have, you know, like a safe net that's going to protect me. So it, it sounds, sounds very nice. But they don't understand the consequences or the price to pay in order to have that. And the net they get is full of holes. <laughs> you know, it's not a good net either. So there is really nothing, but they think that they can do it better this time. And this is not new. Every, socialism, every socialist uh, government always proposes to say, oh, the previous one, well, they didn't know how to do it, but I know how to do it. And it's, that happens in Argentina, in Venezuela, Bolivia, whatever, you know, any, in any place has been exactly the same, the same thing. They always think that the person in charge was the, not the right one, now we have the good one. <coughs> it never happened. So, so this is pretty much my, my message, you know, here is uh, how we address this problem where uh, socialism is getting this um, roots and, and can get, you know, even deeper roots. Uh, and and that's, that's my concern, that I, probably we are not doing enough now in order to prevent that to happen. And, and, and I think that 
We have a big, pro big problem in education. I think uh, there are great teachers. I'm not saying that every teacher is a problem, but in the system, there is a problem. Again, we have here in education, even university is not part of that, but where elementary, middle school, high school is paid by the government. So we are losing control on you know what our kids are, are learning there. And I know that uh, some people can do like homeschooling, but uh, for other people that's not possible. Uh, some people cannot afford private school, for example. So at the very least, I think we have to do more to talk to our kids after school at least and, and ask what you have learned. You know, not only math and English, but also history, for example, and see if they are getting some type of you know, brainwashing there or some information that may be, you know, misleading and try to correct that a little bit. Because typically the kids will, even when they fight the, the parents, I think, you know, there is always, part of the information stays there for a long time. So that, uh, that is important. The, the, other, the other problem I think we have, of course, and this is not new for, for you, but is um, the news, news organizations. Um, so this is another place where they are con constantly spreading socialism, and they are spreading this like it's a very normal thing, you know. And, and, and a lot of people, you know, get the information from there and that start, you know, learning. So the only solution for that that I can think of is try to engage more with our friends and people that we know and try to not to be on their face, like Obama said, but try to explain and try to show them another point of view and, and, and explain why they are wrong. Because there are many, and this is a good thing in favor of, in my opinion for us, is we have a lot of good <coughs> examples, examples that are successful. They have very few. They always say, well, see, you know, Sweden or see Norway <laughs> and pretty much that's it. <laughs> and those are countries where they have like, you know, five, six, seven billion people, population. And even in those countries, for example, taxes for corporation are really low because they have this system that can be considered socialist, but they have a very healthy free market as well. And when you see how much they pay in taxes, for example, in Sweden or Norway, they pay about 70% of the salary. So maybe you're working from January to, I don't know, November or September for the government, for those freebies. But again, they're never free. And, and then after that, you know, you have probably two, three months that is your actual money. <coughs> Imagine that your mug and some, someone takes 70% or 60% of all your money you have, you still pay. You know, <laughs> you're, you're going to try to defend yourself against that. Well, uh, they pay. And they have maybe a good system that works for them. Again, each case is different. In case of Norway, they have a lot of oil. They have a lot of things that we don't have. So this, those systems cannot be imported here because they are completely different. And when we see the country where it's more similar to the United States, they, that they have socialism, they failed. They failed. So that's uh, pretty much uh, the message I had. And I hope <laughs> it was useful and interesting for you.